Well, I, I think I think what the pastor I think the point the pastor makes is a good one, but it's an incomplete one. All of the New Testament is about a love relationship with God that's appropriated for all of us through the Lord Jesus Christ and the sacrifice on the cross. Agreed. As a result of that, there are ethics, there are rules, there are things that happen, but, but those rules and those ethics are not the core. The core is the relationship. It's like my relationship with my wife. My wife and I love one another, but if we went to a conference that just taught us all the rules of what a good home should look like, that would be a sterile uh, existence. Or if we learn about love and intimacy and growth and process and going through life together, then those ideas can supplement that. That's the way the Bible is. And so that's why the Bible says in Romans 1, when it talks about homosexuality, it follows up with the first verse in Romans 2 saying, hey, be cautious about judging other people about this because you all do the same things. And then, and then he concludes that first paragraph in, um, in Romans 2 by saying, by saying, hasn't it dawned on you that it's the love and mercy of God that leads to our repentance and our salvation? And so, so what he highlights there is that we're all, go we, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to create in us a Holy Spirit. We grow. The purpose of the Word of God is to convict right. us and, and help us grow, sanctify Jennifer, us. That's all good. Uh, but we can't do it to one another like that. Jennifer, you would say amen to That's that, not our right? role with I, each other. I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that leaves room for a great many sinful people. <laughs> well, we're all sinful people. So it, I, well, what it gives room for is, people. is truth that right. is relative. You know, Cain was given parameters and specifics to his offering. Bob. And he chose not to do with that offering what God had laid out. So as much as Ted's saying, you know, the rules don't really apply, they apply. I love you and, and I, I pray for you. I hurt for Kane. I'm not saying I hurt they for don't Jennifer. Apply. Hey, I'm and not, uh, I want to I want to say not saying they don't God's apply. word. Jennifer wants to say something. Oh, I just want to say I, I, I appreciate day. thank you. I, I appreciate both your men's wisdom. Uh you you guys have in several different ways have been speakers of the truth in a community that has looked to you. I thank you and I pray for your ministry. I hope that you continue to be a light for the people that you serve and the people who call upon you. That's, that's what love is. To, to be here and even though that I phenomenally disagree, to, to encourage you to find the truth that's written in this mysterious and sacred word. Oh, that's and my that's all I you, ask. Jennifer, is that's to all find I the truth ask that is, is written that as you in this. as as we all continue on our travel well, and our journey in this mysterious let me story of the prodigal. Let me get a break. Let me get a break, folks. We'll be right, we'll be we'll be right back. Yeah. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We uh, have just touched this subject, but it is an important one since so many people are affected by it. Uh, I just want to get some concluding thoughts. Ted, you, are you saying it is a choice or not a choice? The uh, sexuality, do we choose well, our, do, whether we're gay or whether we're hetero? Do we choose that, in your opinion? Uh, I, I think that's, that's a very, very complex thing that I don't want to get into here. What I do want to say here, though, is that I believe that the Bible is the Word of God and it's inspired and inerrant. And I believe Jesus was very clear, and the scriptures are very clear when they say the command is to love, the command that covers them all, that's predominant, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so, so love is the predominant thing. God is love, the scripture says. Jesus displays how to do this. And Jesus warns religious leaders strongly that we must not use the scriptures to point our fingers at other at other other people without letting the fingers point at us as is well is that true and in your so opinion, that's just Bob. that's my concluding thought is that true absolutely yeah, we're not done completely, yeah i, I agree with that completely larry so and i point just, a finger at jennifer well jennifer is in a position of great influence and a lot of people look to her life and I wouldn't want her example she thinks she, you, or you, lifestyle you don't want to stumble. Young children in you mean someone who looked at us and say, "You a young teenage girl that's sitting in your congregation who says, gosh, I think I might have to choose between my sexuality and my faith. You want her to choose faith. I do. I want you to choose faith. And you don't, you want her to chosen. deny any part of her process to go through the process of shame without truly discovering. Let's say that she doesn't want to choose 
to be homosexual, at which point does that become an honest decision because you've guilted her into, don't be like Jen? Well, I, I'm just coming back to the Bible, and clearly God has an opinion on this issue, and I'm just then wanting to stand I, up for the truth yeah, of, and of God's word. I will repeat to you, I'll repeat to you what I said to you backstage, that the next time that you want to talk about an example of what you actually mean to teach to your followers, please use the words, this is the way the congregation and how we're going to talk about homosexuality within our community, within well, our church. And don't Jen's use God my name, do not use my name as, as a substitute said, as for the said, word homosexuality. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm to be a light in a dark place and there is a lot of justification now and let's just open up our arms of grace and welcome Jen back into but the Christian what community. I don't understand is, How, it where was I gone? Yeah, I'm puzzled. How, it where did I go? It can't be a for sin. For years to Australia it, and everyone can't be Because a, I wasn't in your church? Can, it can't be a sin unless it's chosen. I can't be a. It's, it's a sin not because God you, says it's a. You sin. can't be a sinner if you're Larry. born with four fingers. You can't be a sinner. You had, don't have a fifth Larry. finger. Nothing sinful about having four fingers, Larry. Uh, not well, at all. If, if, if choice some scripture said that you can't have making. four fingers, you'd be condemned. You can't have four. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, I don't understand it. If you, you're saying it's a choice. I'm saying Paul clearly says in Galatians chapter two, what, whatever my life has been up until this point, I've now met Christ, and. And Paul says, as a result of what Christ has done for me on the cross, I'm to be crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, whether it's homosexuality tendencies, whether it's stealing tendencies, whether it's tendencies of That's adultery, right. no pedophile. It's no longer I. It's Christ you who lives them. in me. And the life I live, I live by faith. I can't have it both ways. I Ted, can't. We're, we're, Ted, we're, ne we're only got a minute left. We're never going to answer this, are we, Ted? Never. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's an understanding of roles. I think, I think Jennifer's right, and she's saying, you do that with your congregation, but we are not your congregation. Mm. All right. And, uh, and I think the pastor is right in that I'm crucified with Christ, so let Jennifer go through her process as well, right, and God is the one who will judge it. Thank you all very much for an enlightened, interesting discussion. We hope to have you back. Jennifer Knapp, Pastor Bob Botsford, and Ted Haggard.